Let me make my meaning abundantly and completely clear if I can. The United States for any war, cold or otherwise, its only desire is to live in peace and freedom and to let all other people live in peace and freedom. has released documents that show its role in the 1953 coup. That is the coup that toppled Iran's democratically elected prime minister, Mohammad Mossadegh, had moved to nationalize oil production in Iran. Two weeks ago, unquote, apparently around the same time the president signed the covert operations order. The new leader spent the past two decades of his life in Libya? No. In suburban Virginia, where he had no visible means of support. But the latest come from Yemen. Eyewitnesses are telling CNN that there are large protests taking place outside the U.S. Embassy in the capital city of Sakna. Uh, the CIA wants the authority to launch signature strikes. Now, signature strike means that they don't have to know the identities of those who could be killed. The issue here that I'm concerned with, and that is the fact that the U.S. and the CIA are working to overthrow the Syrian government of Assad, uh, while Russia, a longtime ally of Assad for decades now, is working to defend or uphold this Syrian government of Assad and this this puts us in a position of a possible direct head-to-head -head conflict with Russia as long as the US and CIA continue down this path. Because he was caught uh, off balance by uh, the protests in the Maidan and uh, Yanukovych then fleeing after we had brokered a deal. Uh, to transition power in Ukraine. So we had brokered a deal uh, to transition power in Ukraine. The cities which Kiev is now striving to force into submission are sitting on large, untapped reserves of natural gas. Вот знакомьтесь, управляющей фирмы Хантер Байден, родной сын действующего вице-президента Соединенных Штатов Америки Джо Байдена. The economic interest in this case is what's driving the coup regime in Kiev to launch military action against its own citizens. Депутаты, які приїхали, що вони общалися з людьми, які були на блокпостах, які просять, випрошують, виривають команду порвати сепаратисти. Дайте їм таку можливість. Дайте їм таку можливість, нехай воюють, нехай заключають договір. Мене ніхто не питався, чи я сьогодні готовий бити людину. There are actually people who have gone from the US and helped um, Nazi battalions in Ukraine and returned to the US without prosecution. English-speaking foreigners in Ukraine's army uniform in the port city of Mariupol. Stop, stop, let me destroy it then. Uh, my face, uh, my face please. And this man was caught on camera as a journalist trying to question him on the situation in the city shortly after it was shelled. These documents from George Soros's Open Society Foundations show persistent efforts by the organization to influence the political process in Europe. Do you have influence yes. on the part of the principal policymaker, not only towards Russia, but towards yes. Eastern Europe? Yes. Uh, the, the, the country where I'm most engaged and we are really working together is Ukraine. Yes. If you go back uh, over history from the end of World War II to the present, you will see a consistent pattern followed by the United States government to bring about regime change in countries, and that is to send in well-funded uh, non-governmental organizations, activist groups, agitators, agent provocateurs, and create massive civil unrest to destabilize and bring down a democratic government. And we've spoken with some of the folks with Black Lives Matter that are, are familiar to us. And they have tried, and they, they understand this is not them. This is an anarchist group that is hijacked and inserted itself in a larger crowd. This is the Portland Police Bureau. This 
area is a restricted access area. He news the city of Portland, a riot zone tonight. At least 4,000 protesters in the streets, windows smashed, buildings spray painted, cars damaged. The big question, did police wait too long to move in with riot gear at 11 o'clock? Greetings sleepers. The totality of what is revealed in the three hack documents show that Suras is effectively the puppet master pulling most of the strings in Kiev. Suras Foundation's Ukraine branch, International Renaissance Foundation, IRF, has been involved in Ukraine since 1989. His IRF doled out more than $100 million to Ukrainian NGOs two years before the fall of the Soviet Union creating the preconditions for Ukraine's independence from Russia in 1991. Suras also admitted to financing the 2013-2014 Maidan Square protests that brought the current government into power. Suras foundations were also deeply involved in the 2004 Orange Revolution that brought the corrupt but pro-NATO Viktor Yushchenko into power with his American wife who had been in the U.S. State Department. In 2004 just weeks after Sura's International Renaissance Foundation had succeeded in getting Viktor Yushchenko as president of Ukraine, Michael McFowl wrote an op-ed for the Washington Post. McFowl, a specialist in organizing color revolutions, who later became U.S. ambassador to Russia, revealed. Did Americans meddle in the internal affairs of Ukraine? Yes. The American agents of influence would prefer different language to describe their activities, democratic assistance, democracy promotion, civil society support, etc. But their work, however labeled, seeks to influence political change in Ukraine. Anyone familiar with the history of the Soros Open Society foundations in Eastern Europe and around the world since the late 1980s, will know that his supposedly philanthropic democracy-building projects in Poland, Russia, or Ukraine in the 1990s allowed Soros the businessman to literally plunder the former communist country's wealth, according to the New Eastern Outlook. During the 2016 presidential cycle, Soros committed $25 million to the 2016 campaign of Hillary Clinton. To the standard Clinton operating procedure, this was indicative of the symbiotic relationship of favors between the billionaire and his array of political puppets across the globe. As a testament to the power wielded by Soros, contained within WikiLeaks' recent release of hacked DNC emails, is a message from billionaire globalist financier George Soros to Hillary Clinton while she was U.S. Secretary of State, that clearly reveals Clinton as a Soros puppet. Found within the WikiLeaks Hillary Clinton email archive is an email with the subject unrest in Albania, in which Soros makes clear to Clinton that two things need to be done urgently. He then directs the Secretary of State to bring the full weight of the international community to bear on Prime Minister Berisha and appoint a senior European official as mediator, revealing the influence he wields within the corridors of power. Suras then provides Secretary of State Clinton with three names from which to choose. Unsurprisingly, Clinton acquiesced and chose one of the officials recommended by Suras, Miroslav Lajkak. Make no mistake that the events you're seeing transpire nationwide are being orchestrated in part by a billionaire political elite class that is looking to subvert the will of the American people by attempting to foment a new American revolution.
Sarah's formula has been duplicated in numerous nations, and it looks as if he now has the US in his sights as the next target. Organizing anti-Trump rallies is called Move On. It's calling for action and demonstrations against the president-elect nationwide. However, Move On apparently has ties to billionaire investor George Soros. Ah, there's a name to conjure with. That information uh, came to light from the emails leaked by WikiLeaks from Hillary Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta. In the leaked emails, Soros uh, is told about activists who need funding with the Move On group highlighted. Interesting turn of events. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us 